nursing interventions. What can we do to assist patients when they do share with us that they may have some sleep problems? Well, we want to teach good sleep hygiene, and this can be for all ages of, of the lifespan. So when you're taking care of children, what might be some teaching that we could assist the family in some sleep hygiene activities? So again, I'm going to pause for a minute and think about what kinds of things would help a toddler go to bed? What kinds of things do you do with your children, those of you with children or those who babysit? So uh, bedtime stories, um, brushing their teeth, having a cozy blanket or a stuffed animal, um, prayers, uh, lullaby, some really nice music before they go to bed, um, client teaching, so reinforcing teaching. What can I do as an adult to get myself ready for bed? Take a warm bath, have a small snack, uh, pro high protein snack, but but a small amount, not a big, huge Thanksgiving dinner. Um, what bedtime rituals can I help my patient with and what can I um, help guide them? Um, making sure that the room is dark when they go to sleep. Creating a restful environment, making it quiet, and promoting any comfort and or relaxation, whether that's guided imagery, meditation, um, warm bath, herbal tea, that kind of thing. And relaxation, making sure they have comfortable PJs, smooth bed linen, um, assist to make sure that they go to the bathroom, um, offer a back massage, and we can offer these kinds of things for our patients. Position correctly for muscle relaxation, schedule meds to avoid waking if possible, administer pain medications 30 minutes before they go to sleep, that may be something nice that we can offer. Listen to their concerns before they go to bed. Warm the bed and blankets if the patient is cold. And for babies, especially newborns and infants, we have the little sleeping hats for them to wear. The more ways to promote sleep is reducing those environmental distractions. Um, what patients and what units in the hospital may have experiences with sleep deprivation? So again, I'm going to pause. Think about what patients or what areas of the hospital may be more at risk for having sleep deprivation. Okay, if you said the intensive care unit where there's loud monitors and patients are awoken for activities in the intensive care which need to happen, will probably experience sleep deprivation. So we want to really tune into creative ways um, as nurses that we can assist them with getting some sleep, even if it's a little bit of a nap. Um, decreasing the noise, decreasing the lights. Having, um, making sure that they have a sign on the door where we're going to say do not disturb for a while. Um, performing only essential activities at night, maybe adjusting the bath or the adjusting taking vital signs at certain times, and including rest activity, rest time during the uh, daytime if, if need be. So again, you as nurses will be responsible for being very tuned in to what's going on with promoting sleep and rest for your patients, whether they're in the intensive care unit, in a nursing home setting, or in a, on a medical unit. Medications may need to be prescribed, and the doctor may give you a medication to assist with sleep. It's important, though, that to know that for most research, sleep medications should not be done or given longer than a week to two weeks time frame. And we will be responsible to administer the medications, but usually we start with lower doses first before moving to higher doses. Um, some may be um, detrimental to a fetus for a pregnant woman, so we want to tune into that. Um, may affect daytime wakefulness, vary in onset and duration, 
affects both REM and NREM sleep. And regular use can cause tolerance and what we call rebound insomnia. And usually not more than one week to two weeks time. An abrupt cessation of any sleep um, medications may cause withdrawal symptoms in the patient. So again, we want to be tuned into that as well. Um, and so as we continue, I wanted to just spend some time looking at your outline in the course manual and some of the activities we would like you to do with your um, classmates. Um, both the Ackley book and the Kosher book review the um, sleep rest. So I wanted to spend a couple minutes having you look at that if you have your books nearby. Chapter 45 in Kosher is um, what chapter talks about the physiology of sleep. So when you open your book, you'll notice that the first couple pages talk about the physiology of sleep. Um, page 1164, why we, why we need sleep. So that reviews the purpose of sleep. Sleep cycles, both NREM and REM, are reviewed on 1164, 1165, 1166. And the functions of sleep are reviewed there as well. So both NREM and REM are important sleep cycles. Both are important. And um, lifespan considerations are on page 1166 and 1167. Uh, there's a picture also of the sleep cycle and how many hours, and that's reviewed on page 1166. Symptoms of insomnia, sleep deprivation, and wellness diagnosis is what we'd like to have you focus on in terms of Ackley and Ladwig. And we have some case studies, um, and so I want to make sure that you look at that as well. In Ackley, um, insomnia is reviewed on the following pages, page 63, page 510, and 516. In, in the um, sleep deprivation in Ackley, page 104, 757, 760. So when you review these sleep diagnoses, Tune in to which one would be more applicable for the symptoms of your patient in the case studies and how the defining characteristics are a little different. And as we continue with the case studies, for example, you'll see that there's um, a couple case studies reviewed. Uh, Irene will be one of the groups, and Irene has a problem falling asleep. Um, she states she's had a problem falling asleep since caring for her father who has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. She has fears and anxiety. So her PES or problem statement is insomnia related to difficulty falling asleep. So I'd like you to spend some time looking at that, practicing that, and come up with some outcome statements and interventions. Another case study we have is Dan. And Dan is an 85-year-old living in a nursing care home facility. He's been restless, agitated, and not sleeping during the night. He has a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease and has been experiencing increasing agitation, usually on evening shift. So look at those symptoms, and his PES statement would be sleep deprivation related to sundowners phenomena. So try to come up with outcomes and interventions for Dan. And we'll have some care plan practice today as well. So review in the course manual and look at the Koja reading. There's a really nice care map, uh, mind map, at the end of the Koja chapter as well. So very, very helpful readings also in your Koja book and then going and looking specifically at those diagnoses as well. Readiness for enhanced sleep would be the wellness diagnosis if our patient is, does not have a problem with sleep or rest. And that's reviewed in your Ackley book.